Okay, so let's get started. And under the iridescence tab here, you, you have a number of options. You have face gain and edge gain. And then you also have these two different modes. One is artistic and one's physical. And I'm going to show you how both of these work. And then you've got this primary and secondary color. So if I go ahead here and I increase the edge gain, what you'll see happen is on the edges, it starts to put this color blue. And then as I then start to increase the face gain, it then adds red into it. But what it's doing is it's going through the color spectrum and it starts at red and it ends up at blue. So let me demonstrate this a little bit easier for you. So if I set the primary color to say yellow, here you'll see that the front faces of my teapot become yellow. And as we go out to the edges, they go through the color spectrum. So you can see here that my facing edges on my teapot are yellow and it's going through the color spectrum through green and then it goes to blue. So if I then change this to red, what happens is that because yellow and red are next to each other on the color spectrum, you don't get any extra colors here. So it starts at yellow and it goes all the way around to red. So you can have some pretty wild and wacky kind of fun with this. So here, you know, we're starting with blue at the front and then let's go say around to yellow at the side and it needs to go through green to get to yellow and that's why you're getting this green color appearing here. So next down here we have roughness which again is pretty self-explanatory you know the lower I take it the smoother and more perfect the object becomes and then higher it becomes more rougher. So if I go ahead here and I change it to physical mode, you can see that instantly the colors change within the iridescence. And this is because the colors are controlled by this thin film thickness here. And this is measured in nanometers. So at the minute it's sitting at 800. So if I take the thickness down to zero, you can see here that the iridescence completely disappears. And then if I take it up to say something like 1600, you can see that it gets all crazy and it starts to repeat itself a number of times. If I just take this back to zero and I start to step it up in increments of 250, so I go there to 250, now I go to 500, and then 750, and then 1000, you can see how this thin film thickness starts to influence the iridescence. So let me go ahead and show you another cool thing that you can do with iridescence. If I hide the teapot, and then I go here and I unhide this sphere, and if I come over to my tab here called bubble, I'm sure you know what's coming. If I go ahead and assign this material to my sphere, what I end up with is this pre-made bubble shader. Now, let me just run you through what I've done here. So if I select it, I haven't got any diffuse, so it doesn't have any specular, and I've basically made it glass by increasing the refraction and increasing the reflection as well. And if I look at the advanced tab, I've got a refractive index of about 1.4. Now, the secret to this bubble shader is it's all driven through this thin film thickness. And the way I'm doing that is I've created this fractal pattern here. And so if we remember from the previous example, we need to push this thin film thickness values really high to start to see any color. And this is done here with this Pixar remap node. And I'm controlling it by unclamping the output min and the output max. So if I want to get rid of the thin film completely, I can take these both down to zero. And if I then start to increase it, say to 250, and then up to 500, you can now start to see that we're introducing some thin film to this bubble. And if I go up to 750, and then I can then take my minimum, say 350 now I'm starting to get something which looks really interesting and I might even go really crazy and take this up to 1600 and the nice thing about this is that all the distortion that is happening to this bubble is also being caused by this fractal node here as well so I hope this makes sense and let's move on to the next example that I've got for you so in this example here I've got this beetle shell that I've prepared and Again, it's all pretty simple. It's all really driven from the iridescence. There's nothing else really turned on here. Let me break this down for you. So what I've got here is I've got this beetle shell texture, like so. And then here I've got another fractal. And I then simply blend them together, like so. And then I blend them again over black. And again, the magic happens in this Pixar remap node. 
like in the sight bubble, everything again using the min and the max output, which is again unclamped. And because I'm also using this beetle texture, which I've multiplied over the top of the fractal, it starts to give me all sorts of really interesting effects. Now I've pushed the values here just really so you can see it. And if I come here and I just take the face gain down a bit, you can see that we start to get something a little bit more realistic. But I just wanted to push them a bit higher so you could see what the results were. And so my last example, I'm going to show you how you can put oily fingerprints onto metal objects. If I go ahead and hide the beetle, and then I bring my teapot back, I'm just going to come across to the oily fingers tab and then apply the shader to it. Now again, most things here are driven by the iridescence, but this time I do actually have some specular on. So what's happening here is I've got a fingerprint texture that I'm using to drive the specular roughness of the metal, which is here. And then I'm using the same fingerprint texture again in this remap node. And you can see here that it's always the same. I've always unclamped it and my minimum is zero because I didn't want too much color coming through to the front faces of the object. And then my maximum's gone up to a thousand. And again, like all the examples, it is plugged into the thin film thickness. So if I come across here, I can really start to push the colors that you see in the fingerprints and to sort of exaggerate it. If I take the face color down on the specular, you can really see, and I'll just leave this rendering. So by exaggerating this effect, you can see that by using the fingerprints and remapping them and then plugging them into the thin film, we cause this beautiful oily fingerprint effect. And I've gone ahead here and I've rendered a bigger one in it for you so you can see it close up. Here you go. And you can see here that what we've done is taken the fingerprints and then we've combined them with the thin film and then it looks like people have left, you know, oily fingerprints behind when they've touched this metal teapot. So I hope that has been useful for your iridescence lesson and see you in the next one.